Amen, amen. Good afternoon to all who are here. Those who are viewing us online, God bless you. Truly, this is the day that God created. And we're grateful for being in the house of God and on this Wednesday night for another day of Bible study. Look, it's been a, about a week or two since we've been here. The weather on Wednesdays here in Houston has been a little um, unsafe, but we thank God for good weather. Thank God for his keeping power. We thank God for the opportunity to be back in the house of God again for this moment to study his word. Uh, as the caption says below on the Facebook feed, we are in a Bible study session in the book of Hebrews. We are going through the book of Hebrews, one of the toughest books of the Bible that most people have issues and questions about. Because in the book of Hebrews, there's a lot of things you have to know about customs and things of that nature. And so we thank God for that. Before we take off, there's a few names we like to keep in prayer. There's some, you know, we would like to add to this prayer list. Um, and so for Marie, we want y'all to keep, continue to keep the Lazepo and the Brian Goosby families in prayer. These families are dealing with bereavement. They're dealing with overcoming the loss of a loved one. So uh, we are asking you all to keep them, their families in prayer. If you lost a loved one, someone that was dear to you, you, you know that the grieving process has no time limit on it. Uh, and so we ask you to keep these individuals in prayer. Uh, these individuals who's dealing with health issues and struggles. Uh, continue to keep Sister Stewart in prayer as she continues to recover from double heart surgery. Continue to keep the Dennis family in prayer. Uh, Brother Dennis's dad continues to deal with health ailments. Sister Mary Hammond and also her husband. Um, they have just uh, released into a facility, a home, so we ask you to keep them in prayer. Anita Hall, Diophilus, Sample, and keep our own Sister Barbara Book in prayer as well as these individuals who are dealing with health uh, situations. And then just life struggles and things that's happening in our lives. We want y'all to continue to keep Sister Fifi in prayer. Uh, Brother Jimmy Thomas, keep him in prayer. He's a good friend of ours, a great uh, supportive encouragement temple. Sister Anitra, we love her. Keep her in prayer as well. Uh, Floyd Salter and Dorcas Christian, these are the parents of our sister Alicia, so we ask you all to keep them in prayer as well. You all, and keep the encouragement temple family as a whole, those who are members, those who are supporters, because, you know, Life, as people say, life be life. And that's what I normally say. Life gets real and gets hard sometimes. And you may have it all together on Monday. But by the time Thursday come, uh, things may hit the fan. And so we ask everybody to keep one another in prayer as we continue to deal with difficult times and situations. And then for those of you who are viewing online, if you have any prayer requests that you would like for us to consider and lift up in prayer, we ask you to leave a comment and we will respond and keep you in prayer as well. Um, and so what we will do, we'll pray. We're going to pray. Once we pray, we will uh, look into an overview of what we talked about in chapter 4, which was a couple of weeks ago. And then we'll dive into today's lesson. Uh, let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we come before you. Thank you, Father, because you are God all alone. You're God all by yourself, and we thank you. Father, we ask you, God, for these names that we've lifted up unto you, God. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you heal those who are sick in their bodies, who needed a physical healing, God, those who are dealing with the loss and needs encouragement. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to encourage those hearts of these individuals, God. And Father, we ask for those who are dealing with life issues, God. You know their, their struggle. You know their cry. You know their pain. So, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you, that you answer their prayer, that you open the door, God, that you make a way for them, God. And Father, every member of Encourage and Temple that we lift it up, God. You, you know it, God. I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you answer their prayers. And, Father, give us the heart to receive your answer, God. Whether we hear what we want to hear or what we need to, give us a heart to receive. And, Father, we bless and we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, and we say amen, and praise God, amen. So for those of you viewing online, this is interaction, those who are here, y'all will speak up, God bless everybody. Uh, and so last time we had Bible study a few weeks ago, 
uh, we looked at chapter 4. Chapter 4 talked about how God promised the children of Israel rest. And he promised us rest, how we will enter that rest. And the only way to enter that rest, uh, Hebrews chapter, today's lesson is chapter 5. I'm giving an overview of chapter 4, how God told them that the only way you enter his rest is we have to obey him. And Hebrew writer went on to discuss about the word of God. He says something that's very powerful, that the word of God is living and powerful. I think one of the things we have to stop saying is the good book. You know, we have to stop saying that. It's more than just a good book. You can find any good books anywhere. Uh, Rick Warren has a good book. Everybody has a good book, but this book is living. It's powerful. It, it, it reveals things to us. As he says in the Hebrew writer, he says, it is a double-edged sword. It pierces us. And most of us, you know, when you when you read the word of God, you see yourself in the word when you're doing it. like, Lord, I got to get myself together. And he also says this. He says that no thing, this is Hebrew 4, he says nothing is hidden from him that we are all naked before God. And, you know, we can hide anything from men. You know, we can hide our secrets amongst people. But one of the things we have to understand is we can hide from each other, but we can't hide from this great God that we serve. And so he ends up chapter four. He concludes chapter four Hebrew by saying that we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with us. Jesus Christ came down as a man and as a man, he dealt with a lot of things that we dealt with. When we get angry, he knows how it feels to get angry. You're hungry, he knows how it feels. When people turn their back on you, he knows how that feels. And so the Hebrew Bible reminds us of that in chapter 4. And so that concludes chapter 4, so we transition. We are in Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. And again, this is interactive for those who are viewing online and here. We, we, we like feedbacks and comments. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to read the first four verses of Hebrews 5. And then we're going to take off from there. Hebrews 5, 1 through 4, he says, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Because of this, he is required as for the people, so also for himself to offer sacrifices for sin. No man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God just as Aaron was. And what I love, he says here in the beginning, he says that for every high priest, right, is taken among men. He said he may offer both gifts and sacrifices. Now, you have to understand that there were priests and there were high priests. And the way we can correlate that today is you have a pastor and you have preachers under pastors. And so the primary um, job or role for the high priest is he, he had to supervise and make sure either directly or indirectly, either he showed them or he told them and watched over them to make sure that they were performing the duties themselves well. Almost as, again, as, as a pastor, he's the one that teaches the word. He makes sure that the preachers, when they come behind, they, they, they've done their part to make sure that they can handle the things of God the right way. That's what the high priest had to do. That's what us as leaders of God have to do. And you don't have to have a title. If you have people under your care, under your care, you have to make sure that you are setting, that's the right, perfect way to say, setting the right example. You have to set the right example. So when you see a high priest, he was somebody of integrity. He was somebody that was well respected in the community. When you saw the priest, they was respected. Um, I grew up, I grew up where I wasn't always saved. So I used to drink my 40 ounces. You know, old English. I keep it real. I kept the old English 40 ounces. I used to drink. But the respect that I had, not just the pastor. But a preacher, if I seen a preacher come by and he was stopping by, I would throw that beer to the side and, and try to, to have some. That back in the day, it was one of the blue, the blue gum, the blue gum that we used to put in our mouth. Uh, uh, Winterfresh. 
put the rent of fresh gum in my mouth because I didn't I had so much respect for that preacher that that I didn't want him to know what I was doing. If I if I smoked that day, I would and I knew I was going, I would change clothes. It was the respect factor because that person represented something in the community. Uh, but not only did he represent it, but he lived a certain way. He carried himself a certain way. He made sure that when the people saw him, it was respected. That, you know, no, he, he's real. No, he's that person. So the high priest had more of a responsibility not only to teach, but to make sure that he was living the same life. And it's amazing, you know, because high priest, we think of People, let me say this different. He was held esteem, but the people didn't put him on a pedestal. He was held esteem because he was somebody that was in a great position in God's eyes. But the people had to make sure they didn't put him above God. You know, wasn't no, he was no, that's the word, celebrity preacher. You know how we are today when there are celebrity preachers and this and that. We put them higher than God. No, the high priest's primary job was to make sure that the priests were doing what they were supposed to do amongst the people. And then when it came back as if they wasn't doing their job, it was his responsibility to make sure that he told them, uh, uh, in our words, check them to make sure that they was doing right. That was, that was their job. Today now, it's almost as if we don't have that. Because people now are worried about if I make this person uncomfortable, they're going to leave. Or, or if they are my biggest givers, there's no sense of integrity for the position or for the, for the call. But in that day, they had, they had a call. They had a sense of respect for what God had called them to do. But also this, you know, the scripture said they had compassion on those who were Ignorant. And this term, ignorant, doesn't mean dumb. It means it's they who, do, who don't know, right? And so as leaders of God, it's important that we have that type of compassion that when somebody enters this enters the door, that we, we, we treat them with love. We treat them with respect. We treat them as, as infants. And I don't want to go too far. We talk about that later on in chapter 5. We treat them as such. But it was the high priest's responsibility to make sure that these things were taken care of. But also what it talks about in chapter 5 is that not only were was he held esteem, but God also put things in place because he knew even though that he was a high priest, he was still subject to fall. And that's a key right there that we have to remember, right? When we look at pastors and preachers and things of that nature, they, they may do their best to live this life. Even in all that they do, they still subject to fall. I, I, they still subject to get discouraged. You know, they used to say, pastors need prayer too. And I'm going to say something because um, this, this, this morning, this morning, I'm glad to hear today. I'm glad to hear here. I, I was feeling a little low this morning. I'm the, I'm the encourager, right? When I came in, I, I, I was feeling a little low. And I'm going to paraphrase. He let Rev. We ain't, you ain't got to so many words. You ain't, get yourself together, Pastor. You can't be like that. <laughs> you know, I say that to say, even though we give encouragement, the high priest was that every now and then they deal with issues of life. And I think we, as people of God, we can't put them so high that we move them from the realities of life. You know, you got they got struggles too. They have bills too. They have to to pray and, 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 and fast and dig into the word, but they and, and still have to deal with other life's issues. But God, and I don't want to go too far because it's funny, but God called them for the purpose. So God, if God called them, he equipped them. And even because he's equipped them, doesn't mean you don't have those moments. Jesus had that moment. Before Jesus went to the cross, he said, Father, if you will, remove this cup from me. He had his moment. Like, this going to be too much. But then he had to get himself together. Nevertheless, not your will, my, my will, but your will be done. And that's what Reggie was. He was that nevertheless for me. Like, no, Lord, I'm tired. That was me this morning. I'm tired. 
Ray's like, all right, hey, Pastor, let's go. Let's go. You good? You encourage it? Let's go. And he'll tell you. Got my eye ready. It's time. Let's get back at it. Everybody needs that. And so what God did for the high priest was in the day of atonement, they had to go and they had to give their, off, their give up their sin offering. Because the high priest, every year, they sacrificed, they offered up offerings for the sins of the nation. But before they could do that, they had to make sure they offered sacrifice for their sins. Meaning that they, they can't just do the job. They have to also partake in it. You know, and how does that correlate today? Shame on a pastor who preaches a word and it doesn't hit him first. You, a pastor preaches something and it doesn't affect him or it doesn't touch home with him, the word is ineffective. You're almost saying, do as, do as I say, not as I do, right? And so that was the thing with the high priest. Before I offered up the offerings for the nation, I got to make sure myself is right. And us as pe people and preachers, you can't tell nobody they're wrong until you first face your wrongness. You know, you can't. That's just what it is. I don't care if it's amongst people. You, we can wrong our children. We can wrong our spouses. It doesn't matter. We got to face ourselves. And for us as adults, the biggest issue is, and I was guilty of it, is the children. Because in my mind, I see you, Pastor Chris. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. In my mind, child is always a child. Right? A child should listen to me by all means necessary. Then I had to learn I am also a child. And my mama can tell me some stuff. I'm a grown, she'll tell you, I, I'm a grown man. I ain't got to listen to you. Not when I got my own house. And the reality hit in. I got, I got to ask my child, my grown child, forgive me because I can't talk to you as if you're an adolescent anymore. You're a grown man. So I have to respect you in that area. Well, all I'm saying is we miss the mark sometimes and we got to straighten some things out. But I like to say, she said, there should be a level of conviction for believers. That is true. If a believer does wrong and he feels nothing, I question that person. I question their lifestyle. It should do a believer wrong when I know I said something to you that I shouldn't have said. And I should be godly enough to come back to you to say forgive me. Whether you are a, a lay member or a preacher or a pastor. Because we all he made, it says right here in chapter four, uh, 5 and 4 that Jesus, he already made a way for the high priest to get there. They have to atone for their sin, knowing that they mess up, right? And so, shame on the pastor that says he never messes up, that he's never said anything wrong to people, he's never hurt anybody's feelings. He did, if he says he's never done that, I don't want to hear from him. I don't want to hear from him. Because the Bible lets us know that we all have sinned, have fallen short of the glory of God. So if all have sinned, all is all. All included. But that's why he made provisions for that high priest. He made provisions for us as leaders of God to catch ourselves. God forgive me. And the grateful thing is, which is later on in Hebrew, but I'm going to talk about it now. We don't need to go to a priest anymore. Like the Catholic Church got this thing bent. You don't have to go for You could go to God for yourself. Lord forgive. Well, let me say this differently. Go to God and then go to that individual who you wrong. See, we want to go to God and feel like we don't have to go to that individual. No, no. He says, if you have an alt with your, leave your gift at the altar. Go back and reconcile with that brother. So if somebody did you wrong when you did somebody wrong. Forgive me. And one of the biggest things that I had to learn is that even if I'm right, as a leader to set the standard. Sometimes. 
it pays well to be the bigger person. Because you showing the light of Christ to that individual. Man, you know, I know we had this fight and, you know, I knocked your teeth out your mouth. You gave me a black eye. But man, forgive me. And you'll see a change. I think I gave this, this, I gave this testimony in church one time when I was younger. I mean, this Caucasian guy, we got into it and, you know, don't try to embarrass me in front of my son. And we, we had words. You're not going to embarrass me in front of my son. Why did it sound like, you know, do you, was it worth it? And I'm like, you know, I'm the preacher now. Wasn't worth it. A week later, I went to the guy, apologized. Man was like, man, forgive me. You good, man. I'm going through so much at home. What I'm saying is, you don't know what you may open up. You don't know what you may find out with people. Somebody has to be the bigger person. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Yeah, this is the book that says, and y'all keep on prayer, y'all should do it. She says, when you're when you're when you convicted, when you convicted of your of you wrong, what? And you don't acknowledge, oh, when you've done wrong and you don't acknowledge it, your conscience should be disturbed. Your conscience should be disturbed. Even if you even if you write in that fake frictions, I take a step further, it, sh it should be a concern. You should be disturbed. Because you don't. You, you don't want to be the cause of somebody doing something wrong. You don't want to be the cause. You don't want nobody blood on your hands. Okay, so he says, right here, and no man takes this honor to himself, but he's also, but he who is called by God just as Aaron was. And what he's saying is that that position is a calling. It is not something that's glamorous. It's not and I think in our day and age, right, we've made preaching the gospel glamorous. You see preachers driving bit leaves and all this and that, where you got members in the church struggling, but you're driving a three, four hundred thousand dollar car. Uh, we've, we've made this thing a prosperity thing, right? And the truth of the matter is, is that some people are in it for what they can gain and others are in it for the right reasons. But he says this, he says, no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron. So, and I'm going to step on some toes, but it is what it is. This is basically telling us that the person in that position shouldn't glorify themselves. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be all on billboards. They shouldn't be all on this. Everywhere they're driving, flying helicopters and all this. And, and, and it's great. That's great if you're doing it with the right pretense. But if you're called by God, you're not worried about the fame. You're not worried about the glamour. I had a conversation with a pastor one time. And as the Lord's church, Lord's church. And one thing I, I noticed. No, I was talking to my wife about this pastor. He doesn't put himself Nowhere. You don't see any postcards with him on it. You don't see him putting himself on billboards. And he said this in, I think it was an interview, he said, it's not about me. It's about the gospel. And that's what it should be. You gotta be weary, you know, because our, we, 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 like, we like flashiness. Humanity, we like the bling bling. We, we like all of this. And so we gravitate to that. We don't like Realness, because realness sometimes makes us, uh, 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 if you don't have God in you like you should, it will make you depressed. <clears throat> no, because realness will tell you that they that live God and shall go through struggles in life. But those who, 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 who want to live this God in life will say, oh, God, uh oh, oh, you do all this, God will bless you and teach you the prosperity message, which is huge. But that's some of a few are called. Some are called for your chosen. This is a real thing. And so let's move forward. Let's move on, y'all, because this is about to get real good. Verse 5 and 6. He said, So also Christ did not glorify himself to become a high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, 
You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Y'all, that, that, that says a lot right there, that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, why he walked the earth, the Bible says, it's right there. He did not glorify himself to become a high priest. He did not. My, this is God in the flesh. If anybody had the right and the authority to say, I'm going to be this person, it was him. But Jesus shows us, and we call ourselves Christians, right? Meaning Christ-like. And so he shows us in the text that the last thing that I need to do is glorify myself. Because if I glorify myself and they're Christ-like, this is going to be the lifestyle that they seek after. My former pastor, you know, I asked him, you know, all the other preachers, you know, they used to have people to carry their Bible to the pulpit. And I was young in this thing. You know, be preachers to be preaching, somebody come up there and wipe their like forehead and this and that. And my past, my former past. I said, why you don't have nobody to do that? Now I'm young. I'm in my 20s at the time. Why you don't do that? was the word he said to me. He said, because Christ called me to preach the gospel. He didn't call me to have armor bearers. He didn't call me to have nurses and servants. He said, if I need, he said, if I need to bring my Bible up there, I carry it myself. In other words, when he said, this is not a position to, to have people to, to, to honor you and to do any and everything for you to make you handicapped or to make you feel like you're a king. You know, you go to certain places and they have these conventions and when certain people walk in, everybody got to stop doing what they're doing. Everybody stands up. No, Jesus, when Jesus walked them streets, he didn't have none of that. The Bible says here, he also, also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. Because he didn't elevate himself. It was God that validated him. God said, you are my son. I have begotten you. Listen to him. You are my begotten son who I am well pleased in. Why was he well pleased? Jesus didn't glorify himself. And if you want God to be pleased with you, you have to have, 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 have the mind of a servant. Other words, that God, if, if, if Jesus didn't look for glory among people and men, then I should. Now, do you want God to use you? Yes. But when God blesses you, that's when you give him the glory. That's when you say, Lord, I thank you because it all belongs to him. All right. So he says, he also says another, you are a high priest, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek is, we're going to learn about when we get to chapter 7. Melchizedek was a high priest. The Bible says had no beginning, no end, no mother, no father. And so basically it says that, that you, you can't trace a history of Melchizedek. And so what they're saying is, you're, Jesus, you're a priest after the order of Melchizedek, a, a priest that has no, no beginning of time, no end of days. So you want that infinity. You're one that people can't define, that people can't simplify. So then we transition, right? We transition verse 7. Verse 7, he says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Put a star on verse 8. Put a, if you got about put a star right there on verse 8. I, I actually squared it in my Bible. Bible says when he offered up prayers and, and supplications. That's right there right before Jesus Christ gave up the ghost. The Bible says that he was praying. He, 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 he prayed, right? Because worshipers, Greek worshipers held what they did is they waved an expression of their, their, their desperate prayer and desire. And so when they say prayers and supplications, he was praying, but it was deeply sought after that he wanted something to happen. And the Bible said his prayer was heard. His prayer was heard because of his godly fear. Mm. 
because of his godly fear. What was it? And the question becomes, what was his godly fear? Because his prayer was not to escape his father's will, but to accept it. How many of us, let, let, let's talk for a minute. How many of us really can say we are in a, we will really accept the will of God, whether it's good or bad? Jesus never lived as a rich man. He grew up poor. Let's take a backtrack of Jesus' history because we, we tend to make it seem like that he came out this glorious life, right? That everything was peaches and cream. You know, when, you, when we see it televised. He was born in a manger. Feeding trough where horses eat at. His by a lot of natural dad, Joseph was going to put his mama away because she was pregnant. And it wasn't from him. So, man, man, this, this is the life that Jesus came. And so, this is going to lead to verse 8. He, and so, Jesus had to live as a child with people saying, you know that ain't your daddy. You know your mama had you out of wedlock. And I cussed him that, you know, he, he would look down upon from his situation. Mary, Mary going, oh, I got pregnant by, 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 by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, what? Let me tell you something. Natural man, I wish, I wish my wife would come to me and say, she got pregnant by a Holy Ghost. We're going to be holy going to, to, to talk to some people. You get what I'm saying? And so imagine as an eight-year-old boy, you hearing this, you doing this, and you already, and Joseph is a carpenter, meaning that he's not rich. He's, he's, he's working, he's living check to check. And then history says that he dies. So as he dies, the oldest son has the responsibility of taking care of mama, who happens to be Jesus. This comes in. So he didn't live this glamorous life. But yet and still, he wanted the Father's will to be done. How many of us can say, yeah, God, I don't have all that, but if this is what the will is for my life, God, I'm content. Because Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. The Bible says, godliness with contentment is great gain. But we, 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 we're in a society now that glamorizes the more. That glamorizes Oh, I want to take this trip. Oh, and I'm let me say this now. I'm not saying don't take no trip. That's not what I'm saying. Don't, don't mess with what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, is when it becomes your heart's desire, then your heart is in the wrong place. Enjoy life. Enjoy your husband. Enjoy your wife. Enjoy your kids. But when it becomes what you worship, then it's a problem. All that Jesus went through. Verse 8 says. Though he was a son, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. You can tell a child, a young child, all you want. Touch that fire. Touch that fire. Guess what? You go touch that fire, they go get burnt. And then they learn, I can't touch that stove anymore. They didn't learn it through what you said. They learned it because they had to suffer the pain that came behind it. Bible say, Jesus Oh, learn through the, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. So you're talking about somebody, you talk about this God that created humanity had to be subject to a mother and a father, had to be subject as a child, had to be subject to everything, had to be obedient. He had to grow, he had to, he learned obedience. Through what he suffered. He never hungered. He was never hungry. He hungered. He said, I was hungry, but you didn't feed me. 
thirsty, but you didn't give me nothing to drink. A lot of us, we, we learn obedience. We, we, we learn it through what we suffered. I learned not to trust everybody now because some people are just in my circle to dog me out. You learn things through which you suffer. It hurt that you open your heart to people only for them to stab you in the back. It hurt, but you learn from that, in that instance, the thing that you suffer. I can't trust everybody. This rubber Rocco, I love this song that he had. I used to love it. I don't listen to no more. But he had a song, Keep the Squares Out Your Circle. They not, in other words, if they not aligned with you, they don't have the belief with you, they don't rock with you the way that you rock with you. You can't, how can two walk together except they agree? Don't be unequally yoked with people. And unequally yoked, we, we, what we tend to do is we tend to just only put that together for marriage. No, this thing is bigger than just marriage. You cannot have a best friend and you saved and they don't care about God at all. You are unequally yoked. You can't be my best friend. You can't be that tight. And once you recognize certain things and become valid, valid to you, you got to make a, de a decision to separate. You still keep it cordial, but I, you can't. But we can't hang no more. We can't do this no more. Why? Because we're heading in two different directions. You learn that. You learn obedience through the things that you suffer. It's, it's hard to break, break relationships with people who you've been rocking with for years. But the reality is, if, 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 the Bible says, who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall distress, shall trials, shall tribulation? I'm going to say this. Shall people, shall tribulation? And he says, I'm persuaded that nothing will. And so, I've been... I've lived too long to allow people to, to separate me from God. I've, I've learned a lot from, from the things that I... I learned obedience through a lot of things that I suffered. A lot of us, we learn obedience because a lot of us, we just have to wait on God. Doing things our way in the quick fixes and things of that nature make, and then it don't go right. We learn obedience. Put it in God's hand. Too much is too much. I need to let it go. Jesus learned obedience in the ordinary life. It's okay to have a simple life. It's okay to just be simplistic. Because in being simplistic and not wrapped up with the world, you find comfort in it. And the thing of it is, if Suffering was good enough for Jesus. It's more than good enough for us. If suffering, because the reality is some of us would never pray if we didn't suffer. We would never pray. Some of us would never read our words. Some of us would never read our Bible. Some of us would never give God our time if we didn't suffer. And you say, how you know, Pastor? Because when God blesses us, let's keep a buck a buck. Let's keep it real. When he blesses us, we like, oh man, let's go do this, go do this. And he's no longer there in the focal point. But then when things get hard, we bring back to focal. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Then things go well. Oh, I got it. I'm good. That's real. Things hard. You pray hard. You pray hard. And, 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 and God sometimes have to send these reminders to us. Look, I called you. I got a focus. I got a purpose in your life. I got a calling for you. If I got a calling in your life and you, I'm a, I got to reel you back in. If I got to make you lose everything to reel you back, he will. Because Jesus, he, he, he's not concerned. Well, he ain't worried about our happiness. He's more worried about our holiness. And happiness it's only momentary of what's happening. Holiness is a lifestyle. It's not a denomination. It's a lifestyle. That's why they say, the old folks you say, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Meaning that I could be dead broke, but I got joy. As long as I got King Jesus, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need 
nobody else. And that's the sentiments of our heart. That's what we have to get to. And until we get to that point, we will never be happy. Have you ever noticed? You want this new car? You get a car that is great. You're like, I ain't getting another car. And about seven, eight months, a year in that car, it's an old car now. Like, man, I need to get me another car. I'm because you're not satisfied. You're not content. I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy. Man, I need another car. Man, they don't smell. Ah, ah. To the point that I had to realize, God, why am I getting all these new cars? Who, who, what am I doing it for? And you're going in debt trying to impress people. Oh, yeah, I got this new car. And everybody patting you on the back. Oh, go back and play the car clean. I ain't paying my car, no. Oh, man, and we smiling. <laughs> yeah, boy. After 60 days, look in the mail. Whoo, I got to pay this for. Whoo. Six years. Seven years, then that excitement goes. You learn obedience <laughs> through the things you suffer. Now, money is funny because I can pay this note. I can't stop paying it. But if I stop paying it, I got to hide it. <laughs> I got to hide it because the repo man is coming. <laughs> I'm just real. Who are we impressing? Old preacher used to say this, and I move forward. He used to say, I said, when you go get a new car? He said, I'm going to drive this thing until the wheels fall off. <laughs> I was 20, 20 at the time. I'm like, what do you mean by that? Then I started having kids, and more kids, and more kids. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> and I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to drive the truck to the Wheels fall off. Because at the end of the day, I don't need a new vehicle. We're talking about learning obedience through the things you're suffering, right? I, I, now, now let me say this disclaimer. If you have to get a new one, that's different. That's different. But nothing wrong with my vehicle. I'm going to ride it until the wheels fall off. Because you got to learn to be content in this life. you got to learn. All right. All right, verse 9. Y'all y'all, y'all pray for me. Y'all praying for me. <laughs> Having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Now, this is the Hebrew writer. What he's doing, he's telling people because of Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. He, he endured the cross that he became the author of eternal salvation. But this is the key. He says, to all who obey him. All who obey him. Bible says, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? Right. Now, I get it. Just like children. Children, you know, we, we not go get it right all the time. I got five of them jokers. I got five kids. They love their parents to death. Every now and then, they do something. And they need that, that rod of correction. I'm old school. I'm, uh, yeah, you can talk to them. Uh, but then there's going to be a time, no, uh, we say, you finna get this belt. That's how God does us. Right? That's how God does us. We do wrong. He don't, he don't, he don't punish us right then. How you get it talking to you? By that word. Or you come to church, the pastor preaching, and, and the word is, is convicting you. You do it again. You hear that same word. You do it again. Same. You do it again. God said, okay, I'm, I'm going to punish him before you get to church. Oh, boom. Everything break loose. And he punishes us. He reminds you, get yourself back together. And then you go back, Lord, forgive me. I think we get things back straight. But in the midst of getting things straight, wonder why we're still dealing with ramifications from the decision that we made. Because we're weeping what we sow. Just because God forgives us doesn't mean he's just going to wipe the slate clean and we ain't got to deal with the issue that we brought about ourselves. God forgives you, but he gives you the grace 
and the mercy to persevere and to push through whatever decision that you made that was not pleasing in his sight. From example, you had a child out of wedlock. Ask God to forgive. He go forgive you. That child ain't disappearing. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He ain't disappearing. He's forgiving you. That child is still there. But he's giving you the grace to, 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 to nourish, to, 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 to love on this child, to teach this child, to grow it. Yes, it's a child of your mistake, but then that child becomes your blessing because what God what it does, it teaches you the love of God, how God loves you, and God blessed you with the opportunity to show this child, yeah, I screwed up, but I'm going to make sure you're right. Hey, say, but, but he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey in him, called by God as high priest. God, Jesus, is that high priest, and it is again according to the order of Melchizedek. That lets you know that this order, and the reason why you hear that word Melchizedek again, because there's a difference between Aaron's priesthood and Melchizedek's priesthood. Aaron priesthood ha is a natural priesthood. It has a beginning with Aaron. Aaron can be traced. Aaron, you can trace his mother. You can trace his father. You can trace his children. Melchizedek. The Bible says, and we go, it's in Hebrews 7, we're going to get there, and Lord's will in a few weeks, if he allows us to, has no tracing. It is infinity. It is, that's what I say, forever. And so, yeah, we almost done. Verse 12, verse 12, verse 12, he says this. He says, 12 through 14, he says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk and not solid food. For whoever, for, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are full of age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, I love how he says it here. He said, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. He said... The Hebrew writer is saying, you should be further along than what you are. Mm -hmm. You know, now I get it. Some people are like, oh, man, let them grow at their own pace. And, that, and that's fine and dandy if you just satisfied with drinking milk. And again, if you have, anybody have children, y'all already know that the developmental stage is getting past just milk. Right? And what the Hebrew writer, who we... We don't know who it is, but the Hebrew writer says that you should, you've should been in this long enough that you should be past this simple stage. That's what he's saying in so many words. You should be past it. You should be past the elementary stages of Christianity. A lot of us, if you've been in this, in this walk long enough, some of us, we should be doing better than what we are. This is the past that me is saying that if we... You've been saved and you connected with Christ. Your commitment with God should be so much stronger than what it is. But he says, you should be here, but you're still at this place. You're still shaken, by the way. You're still influenced by materialistic things. You're still allowing small things to knock you down and it cause you to slip. He said, you should be beyond that. Just right there in the Bible, y'all. I didn't make this up. For though by this time you are to be teachers, you should be at a place now where you should be already bringing people in and they're watching your life because your life is mimicking Christ's life. You should be the example setter at this point. But you, you can't be the example setter when you say you love Jesus, but then when you go to work, you cussing everybody out. You should be long past that. You've been saved two years, three years, five years, 20 years. You should be beyond that, but he says, no, you're not there. You need to be taught again. Somewhere down the road, you, you don't even have it all together. I see that in a lot of churches, especially in this day and age. And it's like, after COVID, you really see who's on, and who, who's really drinking milk and who's beyond milk. That pandemic post-pandemic has opened a lot of eyes that people who we thought were pillars 
was just doing it out of traditions because mommy did it, daddy did it. Those who are beyond the elementary stages. Because when he says, I have to teach you the principal oracles of God, what he's saying is, you back in elementary again. The first principles of the oracles of God, he's saying you back on the elementary tip. You, you, and, and being on the elementary tip, you can't understand spiritual things because you're still carnal-minded. A carnal-minded individual, I don't care how long you've been in church, you can tell if a person's spiritual because everything, if, if everything they see is natural, they speak in natural, they speak in fleshly, they still, they still, they still, they still down here. And some of us, we know some people. Maybe some of our own kid folk. Maybe some of the preachers we know. They're not where they need to be. He says here, y'all, this, 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 this is the Bible. This ain't me. This is the Bible. He says, you are, some of you ought to be teachers, but you need, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. In other words, the Hebrew writer is saying is, I can't teach you to think the deep things of God when you really don't understand the simple things of God. Right? What he's saying is, let me rewind, because if you're just not entering the faith, you're supposed to be on milk. That's what he's saying. If a baby, a baby that's from a newborn to about six months, because they don't start feeding them. I, I know this very well. You don't start feeding them baby Gerber to about five, six months. Yeah, that's about how I know. I, I, I got a five, I, I got a baby. <laughs> I know this. So what he's saying is, if a baby is two years old, that baby is well past just drinking milk. Milk is to wash the, 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 the food down. That's the same in our Christian walk. About time you're a year or two in this thing and you're really in it, you should be ready for some weighty things. God, you should be ready to have those, those dialogues and conversations about God that it stretches your mind in places that, that you never thought you can get to. But he said, I can't go that far because you're still stuck on thou shall not steal. You can't discern. I can't tell you about discernment when you still trying to process uh, uh, love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Hey. It's the Hebrew writer. And, and what's amazing, y'all, this was written over 2,000 years ago and the same stuff is happening today in the church. He says, for, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. And, and you know that because when you have a conversation, you bring a word to an individual and it shakes them. And, and, and it makes them kind of cringe because they can't process it. They're not skilled in the word like they should. The way you get skilled in the word is, 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 is it's, it's beyond. And I don't, I heard it, it, it is, but it's beyond Wednesday and Sunday. It's beyond that, right? Monday, you should have your Bible. You need to be reading. Tuesday. Wednesday and be faithful to service because that's something, y'all. That's why we say Bible studies open dialogue for anything. You got questions, this is the time you can't ask them on Sundays, but on Wednesdays, we have our this is the time to ask questions if you don't know something. Because what we're trying to do, we're, we're building, we're building, we have a testimony how God this is the time because the Bible said they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So we're building, which we're, we're, we're growing to skillfulness, right. And so, and the shame, shame on that leader who wants to get all the skills and not teach it. Shame on him. No, because the job and the primary focus is to build, is to, is, 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 is to make disciples so they can go out and make other disciples. In other words, you taught them enough they can go out and teach themselves and bring more in. Y'all, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. He says... 
for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What he is saying is, is that the people of God should be to a point where this word is so in them they can look at a situation right out the bank and discern that's not the will of God. Be so engulfed in the word of God that you can look at something and you can give wise counsel based on looking at the situation. You can look at a person the Bible says, know them that labor amongst you. I can look at y'all. And I, and, and, and I have my own way of doing it. You all right? Yeah, all right. You show? That's me. I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not, you all right? Yeah. Are you sure? When I say that, that means I know something wrong with you. I'm not going to pull it out. You rather you give it to me, not, I know something wrong with you. That's called discernment. That's when you pass this milk stage. Because when you don't make your base, you can't look, you don't have the gift, you don't have the spirit to look at a person and say, okay, we need to pray. We need to have a conversation. They really being bothered. And, and, and have enough sense to know who you're dealing with. This is when you this is when you're on solid food. That you you sit down, and when they say they don't want to talk about it, and you can look at their spirit, they do. Just sit there a little longer. Don't just, all right, we talk later. Say you'll talk later, but then come back and just like, you know what, now nah, I'm going to sit right here. Because a person that's skillful and on solid food will be able to discern, now they need to talk. They need to get this out. Something is bothering them. They don't want to tell you that, but they want to tell you now. You just got to give them time. If you give up on them, they won't tell you. But when you're on milk, you don't understand that. And we have a lot of people. That just one individual. No one call names. Because I don't know if he view it later on or not. I don't care. But I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, was, 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 was in love being a preacher. Called to be a preacher. And, and, and. And really, we had, we used to have a conversation. He was like, Pastor God called to be a preacher. You're going to license me. I said, not right now. Because I knew there are some things that had to be learned. That had to be processed. There are some learning to do. Learning to do. I wasn't seeing the growth. I wasn't seeing the growth. And then after a while, that person says, I'm going to go to another church because this person is going to license me. Ooh. Went to another church. Because the people they weren't in it for the right reasons. And for me, I discerned it thing. I know there are some steps. You're not there yet. Because if if I signed off on this, God is gonna hold me accountable. That's why he said, I'm going back to that's why he says right here, for though by this time you should be teachers, you need milk. You are art skillful. And you can discern some things. But if you don't, you're going to have an issue. Let me finish this. He says, but solid, but solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their own senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know that I discern it. Okay. Yes. No. Do. Don't. This person is good for me. This person is not. But you won't be able to do that if you're not digging into this word. All right, y'all, that concludes. I know it, it, it didn't conclude on a high note, but it concluded on a good note. That concludes chapter 5 of our Bible study of Hebrews chapter 5. Announcement, y'all, this Sunday is first Sunday. Uh, we ask you all the first Sunday, come out this communion Sunday that we 
uh, observe the Lord's Supper for this is the believer's table. So we ask y'all to come the first Sunday. We are we already in February. Tomorrow is February, the best the best month of the year yeah. that God had ordained and, and, and set forth for those who believe that February is the best month. So we thank God for February. Also, Encouragement Temple, we will start our fast, our Daniel fast, February the 15th. Uh, within the next coming weeks, what I will do, we will have our devotionals in the bag that we created. We have a brochure on the bag that we've created. What it is, it, it shows you what you can and can't eat during the Daniel fast. The restaurants, certain restaurants you can go to. Yeah, because let's be real, you know, we still want to enjoy time with family. So you'll be able to go to restaurants and, and, and it, it'll give you specifics to eat for the Daniel fast. There's 40 days fast. So it'll begin on, on February the 15th. And it will end March the 29th, that Good Friday, as we had a Good Friday service. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. If, you, if you're doing the Daniel fast just for a diet, it is not beneficial. But in this Daniel fast, seek God. Because the, the, the body is going to do well, but also with the fast spiritually. Seek God. God, seek God. You, if you're asking God to do something for you, this is the time to dive into this fast. Uh, fasting, you don't fast from social media. Fasting is going without certain foods. You know, we I've heard people say, fast. I had a friend of mine, he had nerves. Well, a friend, of, I'm fasting from social media. You ain't fasting from no social media. You you're disciplining yourself to not do it as much, but that's not a fast. A fast is is denying yourself of the food, the pleasure, the bad stuff. So, so start transitioning. I think I told you that. Look. Because Red, no, I, I got it, man. But you know, I, I would go. You know, I would take their chocolates and their candies, but I'm having to transition because what you don't want to do is people have make the mistake of eating all they can the day before the no. That makes it worse. Start now. Start transitioning. So when the fast come, you can really go in it the right way. And so, huh? No, no. Fast starts February the fifteenth. February the 15th. That's when it fast up. February the 15th. I'm getting some of that pie. <laughs> um, I do believe those are all our announcements. Y'all, we're here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Come out and worship with us. Um, you all, y'all, yeah, keep these people in prayer who we had on our prayer list. Um, y'all, people are going through it. People are going through it, man. Um, People are losing jobs. People are losing loved ones. People are dealing with health issues. And so, um, the raises up. That's why we pray, man. Why we pray every day for the church. Twice a day in the morning and at night. Before. When we get our day started, and at night before we go to bed, because we know that the devil is real, but we serve a God that answers prayers, you know. And for those of y'all who are on social media, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I believe those are all our announcements. Those of you who desire to give into the offering, uh, for those who view it online, we do have Cash App and PayPal available. If you're old school like me, uh, we do have offering. What we're going to do, we're going to pray over the offering, and we're going to dismiss. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for this lesson. God, we thank you for those who are participating. We thank you for those, God, who are here. Father, we thank you for those who are Giving into this offering, God, we bless them, and we thank you for those who are unable to give. Father, those who are, un are unable to give, God, I ask you, God, that you bless them with gainful employment, God, that they may be able not only to give into your kingdom, God, but they may also be able to live their lives, God, fruitfully. And Father, for those who are giving into this offering, Father, I ask you bless them 30, bless them 60, bless them 100 fold. And Father, we bless and we thank you. And Father, as we leave this place, we ask you to protect us and guide us as we travel over the highways and streets, God. Keep us safe from accidents. Allow us to get to our various homes and destinations safe, God. And to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, and power. To then we'll see y'all this Sunday at 10 a.m. Be encouraged. You're dismissed. Peace. That's it. God bless y'all. What? Yeah. Oh, my cameraman ain't here. I got to do this myself. Ah, uh, y'all pray for me. Oh, it finished.